District breakdown time. We are moved on to 14-6A, which is the spring and all Dean teams. Uh, my man, John Foreman, is joining us from the Houston Chronicle. Man, I feel like when we talk about this district, we always talk about the same teams at the top, especially Westfield and DeCaney. They're still going to be at the top, but they they got some players to to you know that have graduated. They got to fill their spots. Talk to me about how who Westfield may have returning and who they may look to to make some big plays for them in twenty twenty four. Yeah, Westfield just uh, continues to rule the roost when it comes to this district. I mean, just um, you know, year in and year out, the Mustangs uh, led by Coach Matt Meekins are just um, you know pretty much. <laughs> it seems like at this point they're pretty much a shoe in for you know, not only a district title, but to go at least a few rounds deep in the playoffs. Um, you know, they haven't uh, quite been able to get over that Duncanville hurdle in, uh, in region two, but, you know, I mean, not many, not many teams no. can, um, you know, uh, so yeah, I mean, they, they've got to be the, you know, the favorite coming back into the 2024 season. Uh, as you mentioned, they have some pieces to replace and none is bigger than running back Kaji Atkins. Uh, a dynamic playmaker who uh, signed with Rice. He rushed for more than 2,500 yards uh, during his senior season, and he put it put up some huge, absolutely huge numbers in the playoffs. As you know, Westfield really caught some momentum in the postseason and was able to to put together a run. You know, it seemed like last year, you know, maybe they weren't, they didn't quite have the firepower with PJ Hatter leading. Uh, you know, leaving quarterback PJ Hatter, who was putting up some prolific numbers, but uh, Atkins really was the workhorse, um, you know, the power behind that offense. And, uh, you know, just every time he touched the ball, it was explosive play waiting to happen. And so not having him in the backfield is a, is a huge deal, but uh, as always Westfield, uh, you know, has plenty of talent. Uh, They'll be ready to go. You know, they're going to be well coached every time they line up, um, you know, and in this district, uh, they're obviously familiar with all these opponents and, and what they're going to see each and every week. I think the main thing with Westfield is not becoming too complacent. Um, not that they have in the past. Um, you, you've seen it year after year where, you know, they're ending the regular season with a slew of blowout victories and not really being tested. But then, man, they can really turn it on during the playoffs. So that's a testament, certainly, to their coaching staff and the culture that they built there. So. Yeah, I mean, they've got to be the favorites coming in, but, uh, you know, DeCaney should be right there with them, I think. Um, it's going to be interesting to see that matchup. Uh, you know, those two teams, those two spring ISD rivals uh, going at it. Um, I definitely think that DeCaney, um, you know, has a has a shot to, you know, not only, uh, you know, perhaps give Westfield a run in this district, but uh, certainly make some noise in the playoffs as well. Um, you know, in, in the past, they've gone division two and been able to, uh, you know, go a couple rounds deep. So, uh, you know, they have a, a really talented, they, they, the Caney just recently just keeps putting out these awesome receivers. Um, they got another one coming back this year, a speedy receiver named Tanook Hines, who's, uh, who, you know, his stock is really rising as a recruit as well. I think he's a, a four star guy now and, uh, he's a dynamic playmaker. So he'll kind of, I think will be kind of the engine to their offense and their big time playmaker. But yeah, I mean, those two teams right at the top, that's who I'm kind of looking at uh, to kind of lead the way for this district. Absolutely. Um, you, you got me thinking about Tanook, man. He, he makes, he's just, he's such a playmaker. And I know two years ago, he got to play with his brother uh, at quarterback, but he's going to definitely be leaning on to make the big plays for him as he was last year. Uh, an all Dean team is going to make the playoffs at least one. Uh, if not two, maybe three. Uh, talk to me, which which one of the all DNISD schools you like the most and, and who might be a, a push for a playoff spot? Yeah, I really like Nimitz. Uh, I really uh, was impressed with what they did last year. Um, I feel like they are uh, they're making progress in that program. You can tell that they've got the right culture. They got the right kind of winning mentality, the right culture going there. Um, you know, you, you saw last year, how young they were. They had a lot of young players uh, stepping up at key positions and making big time contributions. So that's a team that's, that's a team that's certainly scary, you know, just with all the youth they had. Anytime you have a program that, you know, is trotting out, you know, double digit sophomores to, to go play as starters, 
um, you know, that's a, certainly a team to watch as those kids are coming back and they have that year of experience under their belts now. And they're kind of, they've been through the fires, they've been in the playoffs. Um, you know, they know what it's like, they know what to expect. And it's just another year of continuing to grow that culture and, and those expectations. So I, I, I think that Nimitz certainly will have, uh, have its, have lofty goals. Um, you know, spring is always a playoff contender as well. Um, you know, they haven't quite had the the success of, of a few years ago when Trent Miller, who's now at Willis, was there. But, you know, they're always going to be in the mix as well. And so those two teams, I think, uh, are kind of primed for those next two spots behind Westfield and Decaney. But, um, of course, you never know. I, you know, Blake Ware, uh, the, the former coach at Dayton is and former offensive coordinator at New Caney has taken over his alma mater at MacArthur. And so, you know, that's certainly a, a program to watch maybe. Um, you know, as, as he, he tries to um, instill some of the success that he's had at other places and uh, kind of, you know, obviously he's going to be taking a lot of pride and, and uh, kind of trying to rebuild, um, you know, what they have there, that program there. So, yeah, I mean, um, right now I would say Nimitz and Spring are kind of looking like the teams that, that will take those third and fourth spots, but, you know, it's, it's uh, you got to go out and play the games as well. And, uh, you know, anything can happen in this district. I feel like, um, you know, you really got to earn your keep in this district. And uh, we'll see if uh, some of those other Aldean ISD schools can can jump up and try to steal a spot. Excellent. I'm going to break out the pen and pen, pen in Westfield and Decaney. <laughs> and the other ones are going to be written in pencil. So we don't know <laughs> if we're going to change. But, yeah, I feel confident in Westfield and Decaney, you yeah. know, just with the success that they've had and, and the, the years that they had last year. Um you know, but like I said, you know, watch, watch out for Nimitz. I'm, I'm kind of bullish on them and just, you know, you can tell that they've got a good thing going there, uh, lots of momentum. And I, I think they're definitely a kind of a sneaky team to keep your eye on for sure. Well, that should be fun. Uh, next week, we're moving to 15, 6, a where we finally get some changes. We get some Magnolia teams in there. We can yes. talk about how that forms out the district. Uh, when we get to it, John, I appreciate you joining us and we will talk to you next week. Sounds good. All right, John, I appreciate